Some of Lament and Brown the Flutter got banned on the new Yu-Gi-Oh! ban list, after campaigns from the community rightly pointing out that these cards were ruining Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'd like to start a campaign of my own in this video, as I firmly believe Harpy's Feather Duster and similar mass back row removal cards should be banned, which will lead to the exact same gameplay loop as Summon Limit, and I'm going to explain why in this video. I'm sure you've all been in this situation many times when playing Yu-Gi-Oh! You enter game 2 or 3, the opponent's going first, they combo off, and on your turn they flip up a floodgate like Summon Limit. You look at your hand, see you don't have the out, and immediately scoop because there's nothing you can do. This is known as a non-game, and is the unfun gameplay loop that floodgates bring to Yu-Gi-Oh! where everyone wants it banned. Simply put, the definition of a non-game is the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! where one of the players doesn't get to play, because the other player automatically wins. Under the specific case of a floodgate, the scenario is often where someone opens an unsearchable card, and automatically wins because the opponent doesn't draw their unsearchable out. While editing this video, I found this clip of MBT that echoes the same thoughts that I have. So I'm going to put this here, as hopefully it reinforces my opinion to you on why these cards are unhealthy for the game and need to be banned. I don't give a fuck if evenly matched is good or not. The gameplay that happens when I draw evenly matched is not fun. Like, I don't give a shit if Lightning Storm is a good card or a bad card. If it's ever being played, it's going to lead to a sacky non-game determined by if my opponent has drawn the part of their deck that deals with the dog shit going second card versus did I draw the dog shit going second card that wins me the game instantly. Keeping in mind what I just said, I'd like you to watch this game from the semi-finals of last year's European WCQ. Boy, yeah, I, I know that feeling. Oh, look oh. at that! He's just spreading his hand down to the table. Classic sad five by you. Applause from the crowd. And the crowd we love it. is loving it. <laughs> They're celebrating the classic ultra Whoa. sad five, but there's the oh, ice. No, and she shakes her hand. Jessica Robinson advances to the final with the happy feather duster. Four, five. Now, the hype of the moment aside. If you actually think about what happened, I fail to see how this isn't the exact same thing as with Floodgates. This is flat out an on-game. One player opened the Unsearchable card, Harpy's Feather Duster, and the other player didn't draw the Unsearchable out in Solemn Judgment, so the game was over immediately. And this is why I think Harpy's Feather Duster is equivalent to Summon Limit and needs to be banned, because similarly to Floodgates, it doesn't lead to fun or skillful games of Yu-Gi-Oh, it ends up leading to ones that are decided purely by luck, which obviously isn't a good thing. Personally, I think the only reason there isn't an uproar about this in the community already, because they haven't experienced it to see how bad it feels, as they haven't played a backer deck themselves. And why haven't they played a backer deck? Because backer decks are just bad. And one of the main reasons they're bad is that backer just doesn't cut it anymore, as many creators like Farfa have pointed out. But there is another big reason why they're bad. While it maybe isn't so relevant for this format, as Cosmic Cycling is currently very good, almost everyone has the auto win cards against backer decks in Harpy's Feather Duster, and they're probably either evenly matched or Lightning Storm in their side deck. Which means that between around 40 to 50% of the side deck games, where the back row player gets to go first, meaning they almost certainly lost the prior game, the opponent will have an auto win card against them. This is even more likely than it is for someone to open a floodgate, because the extra card the player going second draws means they get an extra chance to draw something like a Feather Duster. Now, there are some unsearchable counters to these cards. Assuming it's the back row player I said in Solemn Judgment, I'll say that around a third of games. But even considering Judgment, the chance of losing to these cards is still incredibly high. To calculate the chance of mass back row removal card resolving in a side deck game, first I need the chance of not drawing the Judgment, which is simply one minus the chance of drawing it. And then I need to multiply the probability of them drawing the mass back row removal with this chance of me not drawing the counter in Judgment. So with this, we can see that if I play a back row deck, I'll lose between around a quarter to a third of side deck games where I go first, just because of mass back row removal being legal in the format. Now, this is obviously the absolute upper estimate, as it requires people to respect back row decks enough to actually have these cards in their side deck to begin with, and there is a small chance to still win the game after getting dusted. But even taking that into account, this is easily enough for back row decks to be rendered completely unviable just by the existence of these mass back row removal cards, and shows where they absolutely need to go to give back row decks a chance. And with Tempai Dragon now being a deck in the format, also, these mass back row removal cards are even being main decked, which makes the problem even worse. If you look at what decks are meta, you should notice that part of the reason why they're meta is their resilience they have against cards like Evenly Matched. They'll either put up a negate to stop the Evenly to begin with, or the deck like Snake Eye they have built in contingency plans in their combo. They have interruption from the Grave in Promethean Princess, a current combo post ban list but some Omega, which is something that could dodge the Evenly, and they'll have plenty of hand traps to back up their board. So even if they get hit with the Evenly, they're probably still fine. Back decks are already just worse than these meta decks to begin with. And then to add to that, they don't have the luxury of being able to play around these cards. They're just sitting ducks to cards like Feather Duster, as back row decks don't have combos they can open to help play around these cards. To add to this, they can't play a bunch of hand traps like Snake Eye does either, because they need a critical mass of traps to be able to win the games they don't get hit by an auto win card. And finally, current Yu Gi Oh! isn't Goto Edison. You can't afford to play around best back row removal by only setting some of your hand, as you'll just lose the game. Say you set three traps, 
which honestly probably isn't enough to stop your opponent a good chunk of the time anyway. Now you're playing into something like Cosmic Cyclone or Twin Twisters by doing so. Then even assuming you do this to play around the mass back removal, if you do get hit by Feather Duster, you now have a 3 card hand going second into the opponent's full board, and you don't need to be a genius to see that that isn't going to work. So it's a lose-lose situation for backer decks. You play into the Duster, and if they draw it you lose, or you play around the Duster, and you still probably lose anyway. Now yes, I agree the cards like Feather Duster are needed to counter Floodgates, but given the banning of Summon Limit and limiting of Anti-Spell on this ban list, and a bunch of other Floodgates being hit in other recent ban lists, combined with Runic Stun being one of the best decks currently, given the results of YCS Rally, I'm sure there'll be more Floodgates on future ban lists. With the Floodgates gone, I think it's fair to give backer decks something in return, otherwise they're going to fall even further down into the depths of unplayability. With that being said about Floodgates, similarly to how I used the MBT clip from earlier, I found a clip from Joshua Smith talking about this topic, and we're going to use it to help reinforce my point again here. I don't like the existence of parts like Heavy Storm or Feather Duster or Red Reboot um, when it goes to countering trap decks, for example. I don't love the idea of a card that wins a matchup on its own in general. Like, if I just draw this card going second, I activate it against a specific deck and the game is just over because I had that card. Um, the obvious argumentation for, or the obvious argument for why those cards are necessary is because of the amount of floodgates that they've printed. They're like, okay, well, if Eltlich gets to flip skill drain and win the game automatically, I want to be able to flip Duster or activate Duster to also get my fair share of auto wins, which I, I find it hard to argue with that. I just think that both of, both of those things shouldn't exist in the first place, right? I think trap card interaction should mostly be <laughs> interaction and not just floodgates right uh and if that was the case in an ideal world where that was viable and that was the case where if, if your opponent sets four you're expecting to actually play an interactive game of Yu-Gi-Oh instead of being flipped a floodgate on um in that world i would also advise for cards like duster or heavy storm or reboot to be banned because there's no need to have an auto win button against those to balance out their win rate or to have a punish for those decks right because those style of decks would be okay in my book. The final point I'd like to bring up is that Konami already knows these mass back removal cards are too good and are a problem for the game. If they didn't, why do Feather Duster be limited, or Heavy Storm, Giant Trunade, Cold Wave, and Red Reboot be flat out banned? Hell, even Lightning Storm is semi limited. So all this shows that they already know these cards aren't healthy for the game, as they wouldn't be on the ban list otherwise. I will say, I do understand that evenly matched does have value against non backer decks, and the drawback it has is worse, the only card here not currently on the ban list. That doesn't change the fact it completely hoses the backer decks all the same. And as MBT has mentioned in the past, ball breakers aren't exactly healthy to begin with, even if they're being played against non-backer decks. All of this being said, maybe I'm just a salty paleo player, but hopefully this video makes you realise that these cards are another problem that should be added on top of the massive pile of problems Yu-Gi-Oh currently has. And hopefully, if this opinion catches on, maybe Konami will get rid of them and help make backer decks great again. If you like this discussion video, here's another one from me and why I think playing 40 cards isn't the be-all end-all of deck building. This has been Jackie 100 signing off. Have a good day.